Good morning, I'm Kyle from Hibigon, Japanese Bigfoot. Here's one here, one deceased Hibigon. And today I'm doing a practical review of this excellent book, A Field Guide to Sasquatch Structures by Christopher Noel. A practical test and review, and quite an extreme test. You see, this book is intended for use in North American forests, but I'm all the way over here in Hiroshima Prefecture, Japan, with the Hibigon, or as they also call it, the Satori, the Yamabito, the Ohito, the Kakuzaru, or Kawazaru, or Enko, or the Wawao, or the Ikemono, or the Dai Darabochi. They've got a lot of names for this thing. Uh, Oni, that's a good one. And I say that all of these names refer, in fact, to the Japanese Sasquatch. So let's see how relevant this field guide is, how well it works, right here in the forests and mountains of Japan. Mr. Noel has 50 structure types in the book. How many can we find here? Number one, tree arch. Yes, I've found that on Miserable Person Mountain up in Jinseki Samwa and here on Mount Zhao. There's a video of me poking one with a stick. I've had to delete a lot of my original video because this computer can't hold it all. So a lot of the older video is just stored on YouTube now. Sorry. Number two, looping. Well, I found this wonderful example on Mount Hiba. Sorry, it's blurry. My arms were shaking from the experience. We found a terrific one in Sanwa too, but uh, didn't get a picture. We were driving by too fast. Number three, freestanding jam. Well, I count that big stick that was stuck in the trail behind us on Mount Heba last November, left for us to find on our way down. Now, there was no one else on the trail behind us, no humans. And that stick was stuck too deep in the hard, cold clay. Well, too deep for me to pull it out. So it was stuck in there with, with I, I would say, superhuman strength. This might be another example of a, a freestanding jam here. Number six, tree twist. Yep, we got those on Mount Heba. And I showed you one on Mount Zhao. Number nine, long sword. Well, I think this counts from only last week on Mount Zhao. And we also saw a large one here. Number 12, small teepee. My first Hebegon structure find, so a sentimental favorite with me. And it's going to give me a twofer because number 14, wishbone propping. Well, wishbone propping was incorporated right in the heart of the small teepee as the central prop. Number 15, X's. I think we see more of these than anything else here in the Hiroshima countryside. The Japanese Sasquatch just loves making X's, including this 3D X, possibly for extra credit. Number 18, Stick Party. Well, that describes pretty well the stick party that I found last week on Mount Zhao. Number 22, bundles. Bundles were 
all over, all around the XXY large structure we found on Mount Zhao. If you go back to that video, I think it's called Weird Stuff on Mount Zhao, you'll see me pointing them out. And I think in the video I'm calling them revetments because I'm Canadian, eh? But uh, bundles is probably a better word. Number 25, low leans. All right, I found those by that peeled and imported timber bridge on Mount Zhao, if you remember that. And on the back of Mount Zhao, when I cut cross-country between trails, there was a, a two-piece horizontal structure with some low leans leaned up against it. Number 26, skyscraper. Well, of course, that dead and barkless and imported tree leaned up between those two living trees on Mount Zhao. If you remember, it stands on a, on a sharp pencil-like point. Number 28, Skyscraper C. I have a variation on this one from Mount Zhao, where the tree is pulled and, and bent under and pegged under another tree's limb. Uh, this is not the same, of course. This is the closest in the book, so I, I put it in here. Number 31, horizontal floater. Mount Heba. Someone should tell Mr. Noel and his illustrator that they appear to have fans among among the Hebagon. It looks like this is copied right out of the book. Number 32, hanging tree. We found that in Sanwa. A whole tree hanging in a tree. Snapped at both ends and peeled. We found a smaller example on Mount Zhao near the tree arch. Number 33, parallel sticks. Well, we found that last week on Mount Zhao. Seven parallel mm, sticks through to logs arranged in order of size. Number 35, response to human boundaries. All right, this stick party, to go back to it, was made inside what we think is a 1,300-year-old latrine from the 1,300-year-old lost castle that we discovered. We found it on Mount Zhao. Now, a latrine is not a boundary, but the latrines were located on the edge of the castle's third ring. It's the last platform before Wild Forest. So that is a boundary. And this structure was created in the last month after the professor and I were there. We were there May 30th, and this structure was made sometime after that and sometime before June 24th when I returned. Was it created in response to our human presence and possibly our pretty clear interest in these latrine pits? So response to human boundaries, yeah, and possibly also a response to human presence and human interest. Number 36, roadblocks. Oh, yeah. You remember down the road from Grandma's house, uh, Castle Mountain. I tried to go up that castle road, but it was roadblocked. And I decided 
it would be wiser not to persist, not to trespass. Number 37, large-scale weaving. All right, you remember that tree that was woven horizontally between two living trees going in front of one and behind the other, jammed right in there. You could categorize it as a long sword, but it always reminded me of weaving, so I'm putting it in here. Number 41, decorations. Well, uh, this is maybe a little subjective, but I think this stone balanced on top of this stick looks um, decorative, kind of, kind of fanciful, kind of comical. Number 43, glyphs. Um, this stick arrangement strongly, to, to me, resembles this glyph right in the book. Now, it's not identical, but it wouldn't surprise me if the Japanese Sasquatch was speaking a, a slightly different language or dialect than the North American Sasquatch. And that large XXY structure could also count as a colossal glyph. Number 44, massive groundwork. The, the XXY that I just mentioned had a vertical X, a vertical X, what was it, five and a half meters in length, the one arm and a horizontal X groundwork in front of it, sort of like a, like a reflection of the standing X, and then that Y stick jammed into the earth, jammed in about eight inches. Now, I was able to pull it out, and when I tried to push it into the same earth, right beside the hole that I took it out of, I was only able to press it down, oh, half a centimeter maybe. What's that? A quarter inch. So it was jammed into the earth with, again, superhuman force. So I think we have several, um, several types together in this XXY. All right, now I have not included here the finds that we have made that don't really match anything in this field guide. I'm thinking of that bizarre structure on the backside of Mount Heba near the solar calendar. Also those peeled trees all over Mount Heba, peeled trees as high as three meters, maybe four meters up, and the bark peeled in great heavy strips and flung all around. And that weird Y with the three broken off uprights to create the Y with um, what appeared to be a white mold apparently smeared all over it. No, I'm excluding those. Just the types in the book. I count 22 out of 50. So just under half in 15 months of looking. I found that small teepee in April last year. Well, I'm going to try to get at least three new structure types before this year is out. And this book is going to help me. It's going to help alert me to structures. And I think, I hope, speed up my frequency of findings once the weather gets better. And I like that it gives me a vocabulary for things so I can talk with my family, and talk with you about what we find. I love this book. It lives up to its title. It is a true 
field guide. Now, once again, I wholeheartedly endorse and recommend this book, at least for use in Japan. If it works here, I, I think it'll work for you, where you are. It certainly belongs on your bookshelf if you are at all serious about the Japanese Bigfoot, Sasquatch, or the North American Hebegon. Well, thank you again to Mr. Noel and illustrator Zoe Christensen. I'll be back one more time to talk about this book with some concluding thoughts and comments. Okay, thank you.